Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Shore. I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Undertale. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and made our way through Waterfall and encountered Undyne. In this episode, I just remembered that I haven't been getting calls from Papyrus, so I need to start doing that. Unless... Why are there so many tables lying around here? Okay, I'm going to quickly... Watch your step. Undyne really cares about this grass for some reason. Are you watching? This guy right here. Three gold for the fairy. Sure. Hop on. Thanks for stepping on my face. Here's the three gold. You got three gold. So I think this is just a way you can farm infinite money. And also get across. So let's go ahead and go back through here. I'll have to put up text in the previous episode saying, Hey, I know I, I'm forgetting about Papyrus's calls, but I promise. Another harmless and very safe corridor. All thanks to me. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so I assume this is another painted over structure to make it look like a bridge. Uh, like how the bridge was in Snowden. One thing is that you can... Uh, is that speedrunners do whenever they're, you know, doing the genocide route or something like that, is if you hold up and down at the same time, then your character will go towards the wall and starts, like, going up and down and up and down and up and down like this, and you can just go back and forth. And right here. There are many ancient plaques here. Waterfall is, a pra is practically a history museum, except with muscular seahorses. Hi? <laughs> I think even the game is like, hey, you're... Why are you getting dialogue out of every single room here? You're kind of wasting your time. But I like all this dialogue. And the dialogue where the game is like, what are you doing, is funny. So I'm going to keep doing it. All right, I'm going to step on your face again. And we just have this area, which I already did the thing for. I don't think I'll have too many screens to go back through. The wishing room. Do you have a wish? Yeah, <laughs> I have one. I wish I was talking to my cool friend. Look, it's coming true. Aww. What will you wish for? I wish that... Oh. I wish that I didn't have to encounter Mold small, small this late in the game. Well, not late in the game. This isn't late in the game, but... That's like a ruins enemy. Hmm, this puzzle. I've got it. Try to build a bridge with the bridge seeds. I'm helping. I wonder what it'll say over at the uh, quiche bench, bench, or if... I think I remember something about that area. I forget if Papyrus, like, said something about it, or if, you know, it was like one of those there's no signal here things. So let's see. What's better than a bench full of quiche? Alrighty. I wonder if there was dialogue, uh, that I could have gotten where I went here before I picked up the quiche. A bridge grows if you align for bridge seeds, but that's sort of limited in usefulness. Why don't we have airplane seeds? Or phones that can turn into jetpacks. Hmm. That'd be pretty cool. Wowee! I had an awkward time in this room earlier. Good heavens, you weren't around to see it. <laughs> you really didn't see it. I love that fact. And repeating it. <laughs> uh. Rocks? It must be one of Undyne's ingenious puzzles. You'd better be careful. Be wary of rocks. 
So yeah, watch for rolling rocks. My brother has a station here. Yes, he manages two stations at once. Amazing, isn't he? He selects off twice as much as normal. Normal folks can only dream of such sloth. Waterfall. I barely know anything about it, but I'll do my best to inform you. Alrighty, I think that's pretty much... Er... Unless there's two lines of dialogue for this. Uh, I don't have any facts about this room. Okay. But that was a great line earlier. I love, th I love that fact, and repeating it. <laughs> Alrighty, back on over to the room we were in. Okay, so now that we're here... Huh? My brother? Of course he has a telescope. Sans loves outer spacey sci-fi stuff. Hmm? He never told you? Yeah, Sans never tells anybody anything. Thanks for calling. I'm thinking about getting into the telescope business. It's normally 50,000 G to use this premium telescope. But, since I know you, I can you can use it for free. That was about it. Use the telescope? Yeah, I mean, if it's free. And there's nothing here. Huh? You aren't satisfied? Don't worry. I'll give you a full refund. And we also have pink stuff around our eye. Uh, this guy over here. What's a star? Can you touch it? Can you eat it? Can you kill it? Are you a star? I don't like the implications of that after you ask that last question. Question, let's go in here. It's the nice cream man. Uh, is my inventory full? Yeah. Oh, this is a box for uh, other stuff. I'll be right back. Alrighty, let's make this man stay again. I relocated my store, but there are still no customers. Fortunately, I've thought of a solution. Punch cards. Every time you buy an ice cream, you can take a punch card from the box. If you have three cards, you can trade them for, an ice, for free ice cream. They are sure to get the customers to come back. Nice cream, it's the frozen treat that warms your heart. Now just 25G. Super, here you go. Your card's in the box. You got the nice cream. So yeah, if you buy three nice creams from here, you get an, a free nice cream. So yeah, if you want to go ahead and keep buying nice creams from here, you can. So if you run out of healing items and such. Uh, but you get free heals from the save, so uh, if, you're, if it's your first time playing, you might run out of healing items, so... Go here if you need some more. The ancient glyphs have been painted over with a list of 21 different flavors. Instead of, you know, Baskin Robbins 31. Uh, what's over here? Oh, right. I'll get to that in a second. There's a duck over there. We head down here. I really like the music throughout this place. I, I love all of the music in this game, but... I really like the music in this area, too. You're a passing conversation. So, don't you have any wishes to make? You're a passing conversation. Hmm, just one, but it's kind of stupid. That's a con- Whoop. That's a conversation that we'll learn a little bit more about as we progress through this area. For some reason I touched uh, one of those water drops and it didn't do anything. I don't know why. Aaron is sweating bullets. Liter literally. Education? Hobby? Talent? <laughs> So yeah, I just need to flex some more, and then we'll go ahead and be done with this guy. So 
Sorry that I don't have much... Yeah, sorry that I don't have too much interesting commentary on these guys. It's just, you know, a bit tedious. You have to flex three times and just wait. Flexes himself out of the room. And we move on. Right here in the middle of this bush. It's a pair of ballet shoes. Will you take it? Yeah, let's take it. Oh, you're carrying too much stuff. Okay. I believe these are attacking items and not defensive items. So we'll go ahead and just leave it there. Hello, this is Papyrus. Remember when I asked you about clothes? Well, the friend who wanted to know, her opinion of you is very... murdery. But I bet you already knew that. And because you knew that, I told her what you told me you were wearing. A dusty tutu. Because I knew, of course, after such a suspicious question, you would obviously change your clothes. You're such a smart cookie. That's this way you're safe and I didn't lie. No betrayal anywhere. Being friends with everyone is easy. So yeah, he accidentally tells the truth. Okay, there's no response here. I don't know if there's responses back there, so I'm not going to check. Alrighty. Thankfully that one got over pr was over pretty quickly. Don't say that. Come on, I promise I won't laugh. The power to take their souls. This is the power that the humans feared. Hey there, noticed you were here. I'm Onion San. Onion San, you hear? You're visiting Waterfall, huh? It's great here, huh? You love it, huh? Yeah, me too. It's my big favorite. Even though the water's getting so shallow here. I have to sit down all the time, but... Hey, that's okay. Beats moving to the city and living in a crowded aquarium like all my friends did. And the aquarium's full, anyway. So even if I wanted to, I, that's okay, though. You hear? Undyne's gonna fix everything, you hear? I'm gonna get out of here and then live in the ocean. You hear? Hey, there. That's the end of this room. I'll see you around. Have a good time in Waterfall. So that was certainly an encounter. Speaking of encounters, this is Shiren. Shiren hides in, in the corner, but somehow encounters you anyway. <laughs> so for Shiren, we want to go ahead and uh, hum. You hum a funky tune. Shiren follows your melody. Sire, sire, sire me, sire me. And we want to do it again. You hum some more. Monsters are drawn to the music. Suddenly, it's a concert. Sire, fa, sire, fa, sire, fa, so me, re, re. You hum some more. The seats are sold out. You feel like a rock star. Me, so, me, so, me, see. Me see me la Crowd tosses clothing. It's a storm of socks. Come some more, but the con but the constant attention. The tours, the groupies, it's all aggressive tooting. Siren thinks about her future. You and Siren have come so far, but it's time. You both have your own journeys to embark on. You hum a farewell song. Final toot. You won. So yeah, that was a very memorable part of the game. The Northern Room hides a great treasure. 
we have this piano right here. If I was any sort of competent musician, I could probably make something funny out of this music. Anyway, a haunting song echoes down the corridor. Won't you play along? Only the first eight are fine. So that's a hint for something we're about to see in just a couple of seconds. But first, this power has no counter. Indeed, a human cannot take a monster's soul. When a monster dies, its soul disappears. And an incredible power would be needed to take the soul of a living monster. There is only one exception, the soul of a special species of monster called a boss monster. A boss monster's soul is strong enough to persist after death, if only for a few moments. A human could absorb this soul, but this has never happened, and now it never will. It's a statue. The structures at its feet seem dry. Please take one. Take an umbrella. You took an umbrella. Put the umbrella on the statue. You place the umbrella atop the statue. Inside the statue, a music box begins to play. The music continues and doesn't stop. And that opens up the door. This is an interesting room. Let me go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and use a spice or no, I'll I'll use an ice cream. You're super spiffy. Your HP was maxed out. It's a legendary artifact. Will you take it? You're carrying too many dogs. Annoying dog. Dog. A little white dog. It's fast asleep. You deployed the dog. The dog absorbs the artifact. If we look in our inventory, we're left with dog residue. Dog residue, dog item, shiny trail left behind by a dog. That description doesn't mean anything. Interesting thing about it is that if you have a pretty much empty to em inventory except for the dog residue, you can go ahead and just use the dog residue and it'll fill up your inventory with dog residue. And so you can keep doing this over and over and sell it to a shop that allows you to sell stuff and you can basically earn infinite money. Moving on past that, let's go ahead and take an umbrella. Yo, you got an umbrella? Awesome! Let's go! Man, Undyne is so cool. She beats up bad guys and never loses. If I was a human, I would wet the bed every night, knowing she was going to beat me up. <laughs> so, one time, we had a school project where we had to take care of a flower. The king, we had to call Mr. Dreamer, volunteered to donate his own flowers. He ended up coming to school and teaching the class about responsibility and stuff. 
That got me thinking. Yo, how cool would it be if Undyne came to school? She could beat up all the teachers. Um, maybe she wouldn't beat up the teachers. She's too cool to ever hurt an innocent person. Yo, this ledge is way too steep. Yo, you want to see Undyne, right? Climb on my shoulders. Yo, you go on ahead. Don't worry about me. I always find a way to get through. The humans, afraid of our power, declared war on us. They attacked suddenly and without mercy. In the end, it could hardly be called a war. United, the humans were too powerful and us monsters too weak. Not a single soul was taken and countless monsters were turned to dust. Now we're right back into the action. We have to keep avoiding the spears. And I, I love how this game cuts from serious moments and learning more about the story and sentimental moments like the looking out at the castle that we're going to go to and to this action stuff where we need to quickly dodge the spears or else we're going to die. This will probably be a longer episode, but I think it, it should be considering that we're covering a more dense part of the game where... We're going through more things, and I don't really have a good place to stop, so you guys are getting a longer episode this time. Uh, I forget where to go. Crap, where is it? I think it's over here. Do I have to go left or right? I think I went the right way now. Uh, now I don't know where I am. Oh! Ow! Okay, now I know we're in the right spot. We just need to, I think, keep heading right and then we should be good? Alrighty. Sounds like it came from over here. Oh, you've fallen down, haven't you? Are you okay? Here, get up. Kara, huh? That's a nice name. My name is... Piles of garbage. There are quite a few brands you recognize. Just garbage. 
Waterfall here seems to flow from the ceiling of the cavern. Occasionally, a piece of trash will flow through and fall into the bottomless abyss below. Viewing this endless cycle of worthless garbage, it fills you with determination. Welcome to the trash zone. And in the next episode, we're going to explore this place and see what we can find. Thank you guys so much for watching. And in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and, like I just said, continue on. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.